This video is about analog to digital conversion or data acquisition. First, let's define what it is. It's a process that converts real-world sensor signals into binary numbers. We know most of the sensor signals are analog signals, and the binary numbers are also called digital signals. That's why those two terms, analog to digital conversion and data acquisition, are often exchangeable. And the device that is used to do data acquisition is called analog to digital converter. Here's an example, a portable A2D converter from measurement computing. It has a LED to show the device status. This converter has multiple channels, and in this configuration, only the first channel is used. It is also USB compatible. Data acquisition process can be further divided into two major steps. The first step is called sampling. Supposedly, our original analog signal looks like this. It's continuous in both time and amplitude. And sampling basically takes data points at specific time. So supposedly, the first data point is taking at zero millisecond, and the second data point is taking at one millisecond, the third one at two millisecond, and so on. So you can imagine the result of sampling is the signal becomes discrete in time. Quantization is the second step of data acquisition process. We've got our sample signal looks like this. Let's assume that we got a 3-bit converter to use. 3-bit basically means we have 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to add different levels for the final result. It may be 0 to 7. That's add different levels. All sampled signal in the range of 1 to 0.75 becomes number 7. And this is the next level, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That's why the signal looks like this after quantization. So you can see, after sampling and quantization, the signal becomes discrete in both amplitude and time. I also need to mention over here that those numbers 0 to 7 are displayed for convenience in decimal format instead of binary. Now I want to use this free program that is available online to show you a few examples about analog to digital conversion. There are two graphs on the window. The one on the left shows the original analog signal, and the one on the right is a conversion result. In this configuration, the input analog signal is a sine wave with a frequency of 4 MHz, and those red lines shows the sampled signal. Let's get started with a sampling rate of 5 MHz. You can see, no matter how hard we try to improve the number of the bit of the converter, the conversion result is not improved much. This is because the analog signal is undersampled, or in another word, the sampling rate is not high enough. From the previous example, we can see the sampling rate is a crucial factor for the accuracy of the conversion result. And a good rule of thumb is to use at least 10 times of the analog signal frequency for the sampling rate. Our analog signal is a sine wave of 4 MHz. Let's see what's going to happen if we use a sampling rate of 40 MHz. So we got the sampling rate of 40 MHz. 
Let's adjust the number of the bed of the converter. You can see with the improvement of the converter, the conversion result is improved significantly. If you'd like, you may also show the quantization error by checking this box. You may download the program to play with it. This shows another example of a sampling rate of 200 megahertz for the same sine wave and how the adjustment of the resolution of the converter is affecting the conversion result. So the take home message over here is both the sampling rate and the number of the bit of the converter are important for the quality of data acquisition. As for the application of analog to digital conversion, in the ECG lab, a digitized ECG signal is desired as the final result. So we've got this ECG circuit to acquire the original ECG signal and amplify it. Output of the ECG circuit is the input of the data acquisition device. And the converter converts the signal from analog into digital and display it on a computer.